We're at the University of Malta. Because for the past few years, we've been working with the faculty of ICT to develop a light field camera system. The name of the project? VOLARE, an acronym which stands for Video Light Acquisition and Reconstruction. So, what is a light field? Now, a traditional camera, be it your phone or even a high-quality cinema camera, captures the intensity of light at every single pixel. In a light field, we also have the angle of light at every single pixel. As filmmakers, this is going to give us the ability to refocus shots after they've been filmed. Or what we're interested in, the ability to remove the background behind any subject without the need for a green screen. Now, light field is not a new technology. It exists and it works. The problem is it is very, very expensive. So what we're trying to accomplish in this project is to see if with today's technology, you can bring the price down to have a more budget-friendly solution. So what we have here is the first prototype rig. So in the middle, you have your shooting camera. In this case, we have this Blackmagic 6K. But we can change that to whatever the production is using, be it a RED camera, Venice or Alexa. Around that is the cameras forming the light field. It's these eight GoPros, three along the top, three along the bottom, and two on either side. Now those are mounted to this perforated sheet. And the reason the researchers did that, is that allows them to move the GoPros into different orientation and distances from that center camera. The center camera is also mounted on these rails and that allowed them to slide that camera forward and backwards, again, to check and test with the algorithm. Now, each of those GoPros, of course, there's a lot of cable management happening. So they all have a cable coming out of them, which is supplying power, so they're not running on batteries and also a sync cable. So all the cameras are time synced together such that they can process each frame in one go once it goes to the software. Something like this isn't practical to take on set. It's way too big to mount it to more traditional film equipment other than the tripod it is currently on, which is why this evolves to the next prototype, which I'll show you now. So here's what the rig has evolved. Of course, that big metal plate wasn't practical to use on a real set, but we've evolved the rig using 3D printing technology. So this is a matte box. That's the front of the camera, standard in any cinema camera. And basically we've extended it to house the eight GoPros. There's some clever cable management going on and all those wires feed back to this control box. We're on a real set, right? We've got our actors here, Mike and Sarah in a cinema, so to speak. We only have the two rows because with this technology, that is all we need. So behind them can be replaced because the camera is capturing depth information. It replaces a bit the need for a blue or green screen, which we're also testing here, just to get a side-by-side -side comparison of the two technologies. Now, as you can see, we have the camera mounted on a slider. We're testing a number of technologies here slider, tripod, handheld, everything you would use on a real film set. So before every shot, we have to do a process of calibration. That's to lock all the cameras together. Now, once the technology is more proven, you can do this once per day at the beginning of the day. In the case of today, because it is a testing day, we're doing it before every single shot. We're also downloading all the footage with some custom scripts, which pull everything in one go. And we're hoping to get a good result. That's what we're testing here today. The Volare project had a number of objectives. We set out to create a cost-effective solution which could be used on an actual film set. The rig itself has come a long way from that initial metal structure. In fact, we did get through a whole film shoot using the 3D printed model. However, at the same time, we appreciate that this would need to be scaled down even further to make it appealing to filmmakers. Besides production, the tools have to translate well here in post-production to work with existing workflows and software. So for this, the University of Malta, with our guidance, have built these software tools where basically the editor can load the main center camera here on the left of the screen. On the right of the screen, we have the resulting depth map. And using a slider at the bottom, he can select which planes of the image 
he would like to keep. So essentially here, the green pixels will become the transparent data. And I'm able to isolate here in this example, just the man in the foreground. Now, once this is processed, the output is an image sequence, a series of images representing each frame of the video. The difference though, is that these frames contain the transparency data we are after. Now, this image sequence is very easily brought into existing editing applications. This tool in particular was actually very well received by a number of industry experts here in Malta, and we demonstrated how such technology would work. At this point, the algorithm has been tested against the computer-generated light field database. This allows the University of Malta to compare their results with others being achieved in the industry. Here, the results are very favorable. In fact, with the test images provided, the depth map clearly shows the different planes available in the images. Moving on to the footage from our test shoot here, the algorithm needs more work. While the depth maps produced do show the different layers of depth, there is quite significant noise and artifacts which need to be addressed. Solving the depth maps is key. And with further funding, the researchers can continue their work with the core algorithm and the calibration process. While the tools may not be industry ready today, we do believe that depth capture is going to play an essential role in the filmmaking of tomorrow.